most admissions to intensive care units um, are not planned. You don't expect to get hurt. Nobody expects to fall off a roof. Or to slip and fall on ice and hurt their head. Our jobs when they come through the doors is to make them the person that they were before. Our motives are to care for that patient and that family. That's our primary responsibility. Never in my career have I ever thought of organ donation as a reason to alter the care of the children that I've cared for. Our primary goal, first and foremost, is to get that person better as best we can. The last thing we think is to look to see if this person is a registered donor. Many of us in critical care have enrolled in the organ donation registry. Uh, none of us would have done this if we felt that any limitations would be placed on our care if we were critically ill. I'm an organ donor, registered organ donor, as my family, and I'm confident that if I were ever in a situation that I would have everything done for me. Whenever we are called to the emergency department, our goal is always the care of that child. We do absolutely everything we can to lead to the patient's eventual recovery. We put everything we have all day long into keeping our patients alive and putting them further on the road to recovery. Critical care nursing isn't just about the patient. We spend a lot of time working with their families. And they really trust you and, and rely on you to communicate information to them, to tell you everything wholeheartedly of what's going on with their loved one. One particular family comes to mind. Um, their young daughter was in a, ter a terrible car accident and they were coming to terms with her death. Families want to be given all the information that they can so that they can make an informed decision. I was able to spend 12 hours each, once, one with mom and one with dad, kind of going through you know, their grieving process and their decision-making process. Part of our job as nurses is to make sure that we help facilitate that. That particular patient, I, I still get choked up talking about her. Um, it's only at the point of death or at the point of the patient not being able to survive that any discussion of organ procurement is um, made. We're able to, at times, keep patients' hearts and lungs working um, when the brain is dead. When the brain dies, however, the patient is dead. It's, um, from my perspective, uh, a failure in the inability of medicine and myself of having my patient survive. But it's also my role to explain that to the family and make sure they have every option available at this difficult time. In some circumstances, it is making a miracle happen for perhaps somebody else rather than for our patient. It's never expected that a child is going to die. And to see a family who is able to rise above that and realize that the death of their child, while being the worst moment of their life, they could move beyond that and actually think of other people. And it's incredibly uh, giving on their part and unselfish. I'm humbled and amazed by families uh, who've sent me letters regarding their loved ones who died here at the hospital. They're grateful that absolutely everything was done for their loved one, and by the end, understood why their loved one couldn't be saved. Even family members coming after us saying, we do know that a part of them is still alive. And you know, this is the one silver lining out of this whole nightmare storm that we've been living through. There was some true happiness there at the end, and some closure and some comfort that their child was able to go on and donate and help another child live. One of uh, the donor families I actually took care of mentioned me by name in the patient's eulogy, which was one of the most humbling things I've ever experienced.